Dear students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Professor P. Bhaskaradi, Department of Ancient Indian History, Culture and Archaeology, Sri Venkateswara University, Tirupati. I am the principal investigator for the subject Indian culture and also course coordinator for the course Outlines of Indian History. In this module, you are going to learn about the history and culture of the Mauryan Empire. The learning objectives of the Mauryan Empire are origin and foundation of the Mauryan Empire, sources for the study, Chandragupta Maurya and his achievements, Bindusara, Ashoka the Great, decline of the Mauryan Empire and contribution to Indian culture. Before going to know about the study of the Mauryan Empire, it is necessary to know about the significance of the Mauryan Empire. Mauryas opened a new chapter and era in the history of ancient India. They brought political unification in Indian subcontinent. This period have occurrence in chronology and sources. This period witnessed quantitative changes in polity, administration, society, economy, religion. And also, the Mauryas made a new beginning in the history of art and architecture. Thus, the Mauryan have a unique place in the history of India. Now, we shall concentrate to discuss the history of the Mauryas and their achievements. Let us first start to know about the source materials for the history of the Mauryas. Various source materials are available to know about history and culture of the Mauryan age. Regarding the literary sources are concerned, Buddhist traditions like Ashoka Vadana, Divya Vadana, Mahavamsa, Deepavamsa, Parishta Parvan of Hemachandra, Vishnu Purana, Vayu Purana, Mudra Raksha of Vishakadatta, Artha Shastra of Kautilya, Indica of Megasthenes. All these literary source materials form an authentic source to know about the history and culture of the Mauryan period. Dear students, so far we discuss about the importance of the literary sources for the Mauryan age. Besides the literary sources, archaeological sources of the age also form an authentic and reliable source material to know about several aspects of Mauryan history and their contribution to Indian culture. Among the archaeological materials, the edicts of Ashoka occupies an important place. The Mauryan Emperor Ashoka started the practice of engraving his edicts on borders. See the, how the Ashoka engraved his edicts on the boulders of the rocks. Ashokan edicts are basically five categories. The first category are the 14 set of major rock edicts. They are found in various parts of Indian subcontinent. See the Girnar edict, Eragudi edict, Junagadi description and how he engraved on the boulders. Besides ma uh, major rock edicts, minor rock edicts were also found in the same certain places of India. See the Rupanath in Madhya Pradesh, Sanati in Karnataka. They are also important to know about the history of Ashoka and his dharma. Besides rock edicts, a set of six major pillar edicts were also found in the same various places. Uh, besides uh, major pillar edicts, minor pillar edicts are also available which have two, three inscriptions engraved by Ashoka. Besides the literary source materials, archaeological source materials like inscriptions, coins and monuments also form an authentic and reliable source material for the reconstruction of Mauryan history and culture. Among the archaeological materials, inscriptions occupies an important place. Ashoka was the first emperor who started issuing of his edicts in uh, various parts of the country on rocks. Ashokan inscriptions are primarily five categories. The one is major rock edicts, where 14 sets of uh, rock edicts were found in different places. Another category are minor rock edicts. They are also found in various parts of the 
territory limits of the Mauryan Empire. Major pillar edicts are the another category and minor pillar edicts also available particularly the Rumindai pillar inscription is a best example of the minor pillar inscription and cave another category cave inscriptions also available they are found in the Barabar hills of uh, India. These Ashokan edicts which were found in various parts of the Indian subcontinent they are helpful in many ways to know about the history and extension of their territorial power. The inscriptions are primarily useful for the study of life and career of Ashoka and the languages used in the inscriptions, scripts that were employed and used in during the Mauryan period, the important scripts like Brahmi, Karosti, Greek and Aramaic also used for engraving his inscriptions. It is known that the Brahmi script was first deciphered by James Prince in 1837. Besides this, the fine spots of the Mauryan edicts helps in understanding the extension of the Mauryan Empire during Ashoka. Besides the Mauryan edicts, the coins issued by different rulers also helpful to know about the religious as well as economic history of the period. The Mauryan period is famous for silver punch parkas. See the model of the silver punch coins. Besides inscriptions and numismatics, the monuments which were constructed during the time of Mauryan rulers, they are helpful to know about various aspects of Mauryan history and culture, particularly their contribution to the development of art and architecture of that age. They are stupas, chaityas, viharas and pillars. They are the museum specimens to know about the glory and grandeur of the Indian art and architecture and also artistic, artistic skill of the architect of the day. So far, we discussed about various source materials and it's useful for study of Mauryan history and culture. Now, we can turn our attention to know about the Mauryan chronology. Already, it is known that the Mauryan period witnessed a clear-cut chronology. The Mauryan Empire, which was began in 322 BCE, they ruled over the destinies of Indian subcontinent for more than 137 years. During this 137 years, the great rulers like Maurya Chandragupta, Bindusara and Asoka ruled 85 years and after that the Mauryan sovereignty declined. Though the remaining rulers ruled for 52 years, their importance is confined only to the northern part of India that is in and around Pataliputra. Let us know the political history of the Mauryas. Maurya Chandragupta was the founder of the dynasty. He ascended the throne at the age of 25 by overthrowing the last Nanda ruler Dhananda. After killing Dhananda, he captured Pataliputra with the assistance of Kautilya, also known as Chanukya. Thus, Maurya Chandragupta, by the year 322 BC, he, he founded this dynasty. During his time, many interesting political developments took place. Alexander General Seleucus Nicator controlled northwestern India around 305 BCE. Chandragupta defeated Seleucus Nicator and concluded peace treaty and had matrimonial alliance with him. Accordingly, he presented 500 elephants to Seleucus and he was the king who established a uniform administration for the first time in India. Megasthenes, the author of Indica, was the Greek ambassador in his court. Plutarch, according to Plutarch, Chandragupta Maurya overran and subdued the whole of India with a, an army of 6 lakh men. 
it is said to be that Chandragupta Maurya embraced Jainism towards the end of his life. He visited Sravana Belagola in Karnataka and finally he attained Salyakana in the Jaina fashion. So far we discuss about the foundation of Mauryan Empire laid by Chandragupta and his career and achievements. Let us to know about his successor Bindusara who ruled in between 298 to 273 BCE. He was also friendly towards the Greeks because of that Greeks called him as Amutragata. Bindusara conquered the land between the two seas. It is the evidence given by Taranada. He also maintained cordial relations with Antiochus the first, the Seleucid king of Syria. Demarchus was the Syrian ambassador. King Ptolemy appointed Dionysus the Egypt as an ambassador. Chanukya, who served in the court of Maurya Chandragupta as a minister, continued even during the time of Bindusara. During the time of Bindusara, he appointed his son Asoka as governor of Ujjain. Asoka, on the orders of his father, he suppressed the revolt in Taxila and Bindusara supported the Ajivakas in his career. So far, we discussed the two rulers. Now, let us turn our attention to discuss the great ruler of the Mauryan dynasty, that is Asoka the Great. You know that Asoka occupies an important place in the history and culture of India. His rule is a memorable period in all aspects of human life. Asoka ruled, over the, ruled the Mauryan Empire from 273 to 233 BC. His period is memorable in the history and culture of India in all aspects of human life. Asoka began his career in very elder age. See the portrait of Asoka and depicts of Asoka which for found in the Sanati in Karnataka. Asoka began his career with some troubles. It is said to be that a war of succession was occurred after Bindusara's death. Silonis chronicles state that Asoka came to the throne and killed 99 brothers. He captured the power in 273 BC. He, however, he took his coronation after four years of his ascending the throne, that is in 239 BCE. Among the important achievements of his reign, in his eighth year of coronation, Kalinga war was fought. Harrods and miseries of this war described in 13th rock edict of him. In that inscription, he stated that 150,000 persons were killed and many times that were injured. Uh, as a result of this war, Asoka annexed Kalinga. After Kalinga war, it had a profound effect on the public policies and personality of Asoka. After the realization of the importance of peace and prosperity, Asoka abandoned the wars. Later, he followed the cultural conquest rather than the military conquest. Thus, Berigosa replaced by Dharmagosha. Asoka was a great follower of Buddhism. He embraced Buddhism under the influence of Buddhistic monk Upagupta. He visited the birthplace of Buddha, Lumini Garden near Kapilavastu, Nepal. During his time, he conveyed the third Buddhistic council at Patliputra. This council was presided over by Moggaliputta Tissa. In this council, he appointed Dhamma Matras to promote Dharma in the empire as well as in the Indian subcontinent. Dear students, Asoka, though he is known as a great warrior and a diplomat, 
but he became more familiar because of his dharma ashoka followed the dharma his own the silent features of ashoka's dharma are it is neither a new religion nor a political philosophy it was a way of life a code of conduct and a set of principles to be adopted and practiced by the people at large primarily an ethic of social conduct it is a human and a simple practices in character dharma of ashoka it is an appeal in universal and approach in non sectarian it suggests a way of life which was both practical and convenient it dealt with the social responsibilities of the human beings in the society considered of charity mercy truthfulness ahimsa religious tolerance and respect to elders in his own words all men are my children just as desire for my children that they may enjoy every kind of prosperity and happiness in this world and the next so i also desire the same for all men this shows how ashoka loved the people and his subjects as a emperor see the extent of the modern territorial limits uh, during the time of ashoka the mauryan territorial limits reached highest peak from northwest to up to kaveri river in conclusion we may state that ashoka was the greatest missionary ruler in the history of ancient world he worked with great zeal and devotion to this mission ashoka wedded one dharma one language and one script he was an artificer of cities palaces stupas viharas caves and monolithic pillars thus buddhistic structures and monuments are spread and found throughout the country dear students so far we discussed the three great rulers maurya chandragupta bindusara ashoka the great during the rule of these three rulers for nearly 85 years the mauryan territorial limits in all aspects of history and culture reach its highest water mark but after the death of ashoka the mauryan empire began to decline ashoka it is said to be that ashoka himself responsible for the collapse of the mauryan empire there are other causes the other causes may be weak successors split of the empire brahmanical reaction financial crisis apprehensive rule bureaucratic character all these factors were responsible for the decline and dismemberment of the mauryan empire and finally the last ruler bhuratwata was killed by their minister pushyamitra sunga with that the mauryan dynasty came to an end with the duration of 137 years so far we highlighted the political aspects of the mauryan empire now let us see what is their contribution to the indian culture the mauryan empire which was founded and reared by chandragupta and bindusara reached its territorial heights during the reign of ashoka the slight large empire required new strategies of governance as a result a new form of government highly organized and bureaucratic one was introduced for the sake of administrative convenience the empire was divided into provinces each province was kept under a governor who governor generally belonged to the royal family they established an efficient spy system in their empire the creation of standing army for security and defense of the state is a unique one in the history of polity they centralized the land revenue they levied the taxes on internal trade and foreign trade they introduced uniform currency system in the entire mauryan empire thus administration had become the basis for the successive rulers besides the administration 
the socio economic process of agrarian expansion and urbanization of the preceding centuries continued they followed the religious toleration and they brought belief in unity of all religions they attained acceleration in trade commerce money economy and growth of cities thus mauryas contributed a lot for the socio economic development of the indian subcontinent one of the important contribution made by the mauryas to indian culture is art and architecture during their period they started a new beginning in the history of art and architecture they constructed stupas chaityas viharas and pillars they also started this sculpture which was found in all these monuments see the sculpture beautiful sculptures erected in the monuments of ashoka besides stupas chaityas and viharas the mauryas also laid a foundation for the erection of various pillars with animal capitals bull lion were found in various pillars the emblem of india is an adaptation of the lion capital of ashoka at sarnath this mounted on a circular base at the bottom it has a horse and a bull and its center it has a dharma chakra which it became very famous in indian symbol the lions standing in four directions symbolized power confidence courage and pride thus the mauryan rule in ancient india is a glorious chapter in all aspects of its history and culture thus mauryas has occupied an important place in ancient indian history and culture they contributed for the political unification of indian subcontinent and brought a uniform administrative system besides political aspects they also contributed for the development of social institutions economic institutions religious tolerance above all their contribution to indian culture in the field of art architecture and sculpture is everlasting dear students so far we completed the history of the mauryas starting from maurya chandragupta the rule of maurya chandragupta and his achievements bindusara ashoka his greatness and his contribution to indian culture decline of the mauryan empire and their contribution to indian culture for further study of mauryan empire to follow the e text self learning and also further sources are given and they are useful to understand the comprehensive history of the mauryan empire thank you